Hi, I'm Caitlin, and along with the help of my teammates, Young, Julie, and Leah, we are going to discuss a very interesting concept in evolutionary biology, sexual selection. We wanted to start off this discussion by posing the question, why did sex ever evolve? The answer to this question lies in the fact that sexual reproduction has many benefits. One of the biggest benefits of sexual reproduction is that it increases genetic diversity in a population. This increase in diversity allows a species to evolve more quickly to a changing or harsh environment. Sexual reproduction leads to a new form of natural selection, referred to as sexual selection. Sexual selection is defined as the process by which some individuals in a population are better able to acquire mates and reproduce due to certain heritable traits than other individuals that lack those traits, and therefore those traits proliferate and increase in frequency over time. Sexual selection can lead to different mating strategies between species and also genders. For example, in species where there is an asymmetry in parental investment between males and females, the genders will have different limiting factors in reproduction. The females, if they spend more time and energy in each offspring, are limited by the number of offspring they can have, while males, if they invest less in offspring, are limited by the number of females he can convince to mate with him. Since females take more time between reproductive events, there are more males than females available to mate, leading to strong competition between males for mates. These limits lead to sexual selection pressures on mating strategies to maximize reproduction, resulting in females who are choosy with whom they mate and males who have traits that make them better able to attract mates. Such strong competition for female mates can lead to physical confrontation between males and the development of weapons such as antlers and deers. A common misconception is that this type of physical male-male competition for mates only occurs in animals and not in plants. However, we found a very interesting paper that actually demonstrates such physical confrontation in milkweed plant species, which is kind of cool considering the immobility of plants. Kikuchi and his colleagues in the paper The Buck and Milkweed Evidence of Male-Male Interference Among Pollinaria on Pollinators were studying pollen competition in several species of milkweed when they found evidence of physical male-male interference. Milkweed pollen aggregates into two pollinia that are connected by sterile structures to form an overall structure called a pollinarium. Insects pick up these pollinaria when looking for nectar in flowers and can deliver the pollen from the attached pollinaria in the next flower. Something interesting about these pollinaria structures is that they're able to link together. So if an insect has picked up a pollinarium from one flower and then goes to another flower, the pollinaria in this other flower can attach to the first pollinarium that's on the insect from the original flower. When this occurs, the second pollinarium, occupying the distal position, has the ability to interfere with the first pollinarium, occupying the proximal position, in its ability to deliver pollen to subsequent flowers. The authors of this paper hypothesized that linkage of pollinarium could be beneficial or harmful depending on the situation. If the distal pollinarium linked to the proximal pollinarium is from the same plant, this linkage could be beneficial as it increases the amount of pollen removed by an insect from a plant. However, if the distal pollinarium is from a different plant, then the linkage would be harmful because it interferes with the ability of the proximal pollinarium to deliver its pollen. Kikuchi and his colleagues then hypothesized that if there is high male-male competition, such as pollinaria from many different plants present, then it would make sense that sexual selection would favor pollinaria that have a trait preventing other pollinarium from attaching to it, since this would allow them to pollinate other flowers better and reproduce more. The authors noticed that some species of milkweed had pollinarium with horn-like structures, and they wondered if this was such a trait. In the study, Kakuchi wanted to determine if the linkage of pollinaria was prevented by the presence of this horn trait, and confirm if linkage interfered with the ability of the proximal pollinarium to donate its pollen. To do so, the authors conducted three experiments. In the first experiment, the authors examined many species of milkweed, and looked to see if the occurrence of the horn trait also occurred along with the prevention of pollinarium linkage. So in this phylogenic tree that they constructed after their observations, species that have this horn trait are highlighted in black on the left, and species that don't have linkage are highlighted in black on the right. And as you can see, in all species that had the horn trait, linkage was prevented. This provides evidence that the horn trait may be preventing linkage. To further confirm this claim though, the authors wanted to experimentally remove the horns on a species that had this trait and observe if the ability to link reappeared. Pollinaria from the species O. solenoids were used and the authors created two groups, one where the horns were left intact and the other where the horns had been removed. They then tested to see if the pollinaria linked after pollination events. They found that pollinaria in the group with horns never linked with other pollinaria, 
while the group that had the horns removed linked with other pollinaria 65% of the time. These results provided more concrete evidence that a function of these horns is preventing linkage. Next, the authors wanted to confirm that linkage of the distal pollinarium interfered with the ability of the proximal pollinarium to deliver its pollen. To do this, the authors took two species of milkweed, M. brachiostephana and M. odorata, and created two groups for each, one with the second pollinarium linked to the proximal pollinarium and the other with no linkage of a second pollinarium. They then observed if the proximal pollinarium was able to donate its pollen in pollination events. They found that in M. brachiostephana, the group that had the linkage of a second pollinarium, donated pollen 60% less often than the group of pollinaria that did not have a second pollinarium attached. And in M. odorata, the group that had linkage of a second pollinarium, donated pollen 54% less often. So to summarize, the authors found that in species that evolved horns, the ability to prevent pollinaria linkage also evolved. The authors also confirmed that the presence of horns prevented linkage, as well as confirmed that linkage interfered negatively with the ability of the proximal pollinarium to deliver its pollen. They also showed an example of how physical confrontation occurs not only in animals, but also in plant species. To relate this back to the concept of sexual selection, High male-male competition for mates, such as the presence of pollinaria from many different individual plants, creates sexual selection pressure that favors traits, such as horns, that help increase a male's ability to reproduce, increasing the frequency of that trait over time. This could have been the process that led to the evolution of horns in many milkweed species. We would like to thank you for watching our video and hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we did making it.